Perhaps life's greatest emotion, love. Feeling love, giving love, showing love. Imagine having to struggle to convey that emotion. In Grand Rapids, Michigan, one 16-year-old lives in a world that no one, not even she, can comprehend. After years of frustration, her father found a special way to connect with her and in the process transformed his own life. E60 and Chris Conley have the story of love beyond words. The best stories in sports. This is an E60 feature presentation. I hear it a lot where people say, Rick, you're such an inspiration for what you do for your daughter. But for me, the inspiration is the challenge that my daughter overcomes to do it. In January of 1999, Madison Van Beek was just a few days old when her mother took out her camera. We had a beautiful little girl named Madison Nicole, and she was perfectly fine. She looked like a normal, healthy baby at that time. We had no knowledge of anything wrong with her until like six weeks. During a checkup with her pediatrician, Madison's head measured smaller than normal. Her parents then took her to a neurologist who ran some tests. Never met this guy. He walked in the room, flopped the CAT scans down on the desk and said, your daughter has C CP and she will never be a normal person. What's that moment like? Like somebody rips your heart out of your chest. Daddy? As she grew, so did her isolation. <laughs> Doctors would tell the Van Beeks that Maddie is blind. I don't want to say that she was a burden, but she held us, held us back from doing a lot of things we wanted to do. We had a lifestyle that we were accustomed to, and we had to change our lifestyle. Then in the fall of 2008, when Madison was nine, two women with a local charity offered to push her during the Grand Rapids Marathon. Rick's wife said yes. I wasn't at all happy about going, but my wife dragged me down there. Why were you so against it? Because it, there was no reason for me to believe that that would be something that Madison would enjoy. Throwing her in this cart, and you're expecting her to enjoy five hours of sitting in this cart? I thought it was ridiculous. The race started, and as he watched his daughter taking part, Rick saw something unexpected. She had this great big smile on her face round in the corner, and I'm, wait, I don't see that at home. And she went by, and I was like, holy cow. He's like, well, that's the last time these ladies are going to push my daughter. I can do it myself. Since 2010, Team Maddie gets to an average of 15 sprint triathlons each summer. Each race, starting in the water, Rick and Maddie get a head start on other competitors. Father in front, daughter floating behind him in a kayak for a swim as long as 750 meters. Then father and daughter head to the next stage. One of my favorite parts is holding my daughter. One of the hardest parts, but one of the, one of the most gratifying, because I can, she's right here. I can see that she's happy. Next up, the bike. For 20 kilometers, Rick pulls Maddie in a small cart he built just for her. She enjoys the crowd, but now they're yelling, go Maddie, and good job, Maddie. Now I'm a proud dad that my daughter is getting recognition for what she's doing. Finally, for the 5K run, Rick pushes her one stride at a time. Good job, Maddie. Hey, thanks, buddy. Nice job. Thank you. The idea isn't to get a better time than last week's. It's all for Maddie to smile, 
to laugh, to feel the wind on her face and the bumps in the road. How you doing, girl? Come here. I think I see love. I know I see happiness. As I run with her, I can see her in that cart, and I can tell that she really, really enjoys it. Every time I cross the finish line, it's like the first time. What's the next thing you would like for her? <laughs> you mean that I dream of for her, or that is physically possible? Let's hear the dream. For her to be able to run a race with me side by side. That, that or I guess more so than that, I would love for Maddie to be able to come to the dinner table and say to mom, Rachel, Hunter, and me, I love you. That would be, that's number one on my list. Maddie's arrival 15 years ago brought joy. Her diagnosis brought despair. Now, on the water and the wheels, Rick and Maddie have connected as never before. Each Sunday in the summertime, this daughter gives her father so much more than he ever expected. I've asked myself hundreds of times, you know, why is Madison like this? And the only answer I can come up with is that Madison is like this to make us all better people. Madison has been the biggest gift in our life. What a tremendous story. We now welcome in Rick Van Beek. And, and Rick, happy Father's Day. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Certainly a very powerful piece there by Chris Conley and a great perspective from you about Maddie. You said she's a gift. What do you think she is the greatest gift she has given you and your family? Well, for me personally, uh, life, <laughs> if I hadn't seen her being pushed in that marathon, I'd probably be very unhealthy right now. I was smoking two packs a day then. And she, our family, she has brought our family so much closer together. I mean, we have an adult daughter now that's 18, a son that's 12, and Maddie is 16. And we all go camping every weekend during the summer, and everybody's excited about it. So just bringing the family closer together has made a, made a huge impact on our lives. What have your other kids told you about what she's done for them? I know you said you guys get together, go camping, and have these family moments, but have your other children given you stories about what Maddie's meant to them? Well, Rachel, the oldest, she's 18. Um, she's talked to me several times about the influence. Just having a sister with special needs is how it's changed her life and how she looks out for other people and how she wants to be a better person um, because of Maddie. Her brother, they're both terribly responsible kids. And I think having a sister that needs looking after has, has helped them in that regard as well. Now, you, we saw there in the piece that you run these three discipline events. I understand you ran one yesterday. How was it? How'd you do? How'd you finish? It, it was great. It was uh, one of the hilliest courses I've done in a long time. And uh, the cart you saw in the, in the piece, we had to, I rebuilt a new one. So it's a lot bigger and a lot heavier, so I got a big workout in yesterday. But the race itself went good. Um, Madison had a great time and was beat at the end. Um, one of the, the signs that she had a really good time is the amount she laughs and, and uh, smiles during the event, which to her really tires her out. Well, at yesterday after the event, she slept for probably five, five hours, so we know she had a good time. Rick, stay with that emotion when you guys are competing and you take a look down and you see Maddie smiling and you see her laughing. What emotion then comes to you? I think it's kind of like listening to a, a upbeat song. You know, I don't listen to the radio when I'm doing this, but 
it pushes me faster. I notice that, you know, all of a sudden my heart rate really climbs because I'm running a lot faster than I normally do. Um, and then I have to take myself back. But like yesterday, I could hear her laughing on the bike because I was going so slow, going up these hills that it pushed me. I mean, we were literally at almost a standstill on several of these hills. And hearing her laugh got me the energy to get up the hill. And when you reflect on a day like today, Father's Day, what would you tell all of the young men out there just starting a family, maybe expecting their first child? Embrace every moment you have. Um, life is short. Um, there were a lot of times early in life that I, I thought I had it bad, but something good had come from everything. Rick, your story is certainly an inspiration to all of us. Happy Father's Day to you and your family. Rick Van Beek with us on SportsCenter. Rick, take care. Thanks a lot.